Ramblings of a Madman. I don't know. I'm sitting here and I've been thinking about all the things that are occurring in our world. And I'm reading Revelations and I'm studying Revelations and I'm understanding what's occurring. They're draining our treasury. The coronavirus was not an accident. It was an intentional attack. Look what's happened. In the blink of an eye, they're taking us down. Now people don't want to be quarantined. They don't want to be held up. They don't want their freedoms taken away. But it's happening anyway. And now people are resisting. There are protests occurring and popping up all across our nation. The American people don't like this. And they don't want it. But God will, God's will is going to be done. And in Revelations, it talks about the leopard, which is a political system. And it's coming. George Bush, Bush Sr. talked about it. He was just very emphatic and very adamant that it was going to occur and there would be no stopping it. Bill Clinton signed the papers and put the teeth in it. Yep. Then George Bush Jr. in 9-11 They were setting the stage. They were putting it all together. God's using these people to do his will. And how should a Christian respond? With anger? With disappointment? Um, there will be a battle for our country. And I do believe blood's going to be shed. There are protests that are popping up. The American people, they, the American people, aren't going to stand idly by while they snatch our freedoms from our hands. And we already know that the National Guard's in place in a lot of places, and they're there to help with the coronavirus tracking and building hospitals and all this stuff. We know we've heard enough information from different sources that the hospitals are padding the numbers of death and cases. We have no idea what their intentions are exactly with these tests, but um, I'm thinking my opinion is that they're going to use it as a way to separate us. Um, there are already over in Italy, the director of WHO is saying that the people in Italy are still have coming down with cases of coronavirus, that they're going to have to separate families because they've been quarantined and they're still having cases. So they think that it would be best to remove certain people from the home and put them in a safe and caring environment. Do you really think that's going to be a safe and caring environment? I saw a movie one time. I don't know what the name of the movie is. I never pay attention to names of movies or movie stars. Once in a while I'll 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 figure out somebody's name or something, but for the most part, I just remember, like, the storylines. And in this one movie, they had gathered up these people, the elderly, and they were going to take them somewhere safe so that they could be cared for for all their special needs, and, you know, they'll have medical care, and they'll be providing everything that they need but in actuality, they were taking them to slaughter. They were taking them to kill them. And 
I've mentioned in my videos a vision that I had, but I never could bring myself to say it. I've told other people, but what I saw in the vision was people being taken from their homes on white buses and taken down to the post office where they lined us up. They were taking neighborhood by neighborhood. I wasn't lined up, but the people were lined up. And um, when they went into the post office, they had to fill out forms saying where their doctor's offices was, where they worked, where their kids went to school. And then they were chipped. And the information that you filled out on the form, uh, the, the chip would be programmed so that you, could you would only be allowed to go to those places that you were um, allowed to go. You would only be allowed to go to those places. The drones that they're putting in place, the facial recognition, it's all going to work against us, but God's will is being done. And in the post office, after they chipped you, they were taking some people, Christians and conservatives, military, they already gathered up the military, um, but they were taking Christians and conservatives out and behind the post office as you sometimes see the all the postal trucks lined up well those were all gone and there was all white vans and they were putting these people into the vans and they were never coming back they were never coming back and while they had the people in the neighborhood um, at the post office the UN was going into homes, removing all the food, all the medical supplies, all the ammos and guns, and um, killing their pets. And when they returned, they had nothing. And um, I don't know if any of you have heard of rules for radicals, but some of the things that are on that list are if they control the food, they control the people. If they control the medical, they control the people. Uh, I saw Hillary Clinton on a, a blip in Twitter, I think it was, saying, um, now would be a great time for universal health care. You know what that means. <laughs> that means government care. And they have already brainwashed a whole generation of kids right under our noses. We didn't even see it. We didn't even recognize it. We just thought they were rebellious. But they're not. They're brainwashed. They don't respect our country. They don't respect our flag. They don't know anything or respect God. Some of us have taught our kids about God. And I was praying just a little while ago for my daughter. I could not get her eyes open. I could not open her ears. I was asking God to please help me to open her eyes and open her ears so that she'll see the truth. But you know, it's his will that's going to be done. And it says in the Bible that some, he will um, basically deafen them, blind them to the truth. Maybe there's hope for them in the millennium. I can only pray. She's been saved. She's accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior. All my grandchildren... Except the oldest one, they all attended Sunday school. The little, the oldest one, we were living in the mountains. There was nowhere to go. <laughs> Try.
try to save all you can. I know that we're screaming at the top of our lungs. I've been beating the drum so long. The drum is absolutely worn out. God has deafened and blinded some people so that they cannot see the truth. You can't get through to them. Pray for them. At this point, that's about all you can do is just pray for them. Something else I was thinking about that's in the Bible, it says that if you pray for your enemy, it's like heaping coals upon their head. Pray for Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Adam Schiff. Pray for these people. Pray for, pray for the people that conducted the Mueller report. Pray for the FBI agents who were in charge and manipulated, manipulated the truth to entrap um, General Flynn and um, the false black ledger that they created to entrap Manafort. And then um, this ridiculous charge on Roger Stone. They went after these people simply to try to get to information or try to get them to roll over and lie about something with Trump so they could get him out of office. God put him there. He will stay there until God decides he doesn't need him there anymore. Until God decides, Donald Trump will be president of the United States. He didn't know when he signed the executive national emergency that he was giving over power of the United States to FEMA. Mike Pompeo was at the podium. I can't remember what Mike was saying, but the president said, you should have told us. You should have told us. He didn't know. He didn't know he was signing away his power. He didn't know that he was giving control of the United States over to FEMA. We all know what that is. We all know that, you know, it's not what it's been cracked up to be. It's something totally different. But God will have his way. And Jesus will be back for us. But so many people think and believe what they've been taught. Christ said, let no man deceive you. How we know in Revelations um, that uh, Satan's number is 666, the number of a man. Christ said, let no man deceive you. Many will come in my name. Do you think they're going to be, um, like, taking control of the government when they come? Mm -mm. No. They are taking control of a lot of people. False prophets. You know who they are? You'll never guess. Some of you might know. They're the preachers and the priests and the rabbis, and the bishops, and the ministers that teach God's children to fly, to fly away. The revelations has no importance to them. They don't need to know about that. They'll be gone. How can they be gone if they're brought before the court of Satan to be as a testimony to God? to give testimony to God, for God, to the court of Satan. How can you be gone? 
You can't be gone. They think they will be spared of the tribulations. They are not prepared. They have been deceived. A lot of people believe in the rapture. The rapture doesn't occur until Christ comes back. Guess who comes before Christ comes? That come, who comes at the sixth trumpet, at the sixth seal, the sixth vial. It's Satan. Guess who comes at the seventh? Christ. Christ will come at the seventh trumpet. He'll be here. He'll be back for us. But only us. I was watching um, the real BP Earth Watch. He did a really great video the other day. He was talking about the last four books in the book uh, in the Old Testament, in Malachi chapter four. That the sun, S U N, would be so bright. That it, 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 there would be something that would block out the sun. Well, what could be so bright that it would block out the sun that you could not see the sun or the moon or the stars? It's God. God is so bright. He is like this beautiful. Oh my gosh, I I I, I cannot describe this light. It's just. It's not like a light bulb or a headlight on a car or the sun or the moon or the stars or, or light reflecting off of anything. It's just love. It is pure love. It is the best feeling in the whole world. You have never felt like this on this earth. When you see this light, oh, Your reward, your reward is coming and we'll be changed in the twinkling of the eye when he busts through the sky. When Satan comes, he's not going to, you know, um, be like this big bad bully, but no, he imitates Christ. Do you think he could come in here and deceive people if he comes in here all, you know, beating everybody up and, you know, no, no, he's going to come in peace. He's going to be pretending to be Christ. And a lot of people will be deceived. And you know, in the Bible where it says father will turn against son and mother against daughter and, and, um, brother against brother and so forth and so on like your family will be you know turning against you love will wax cold they will be turning you in they will because they will think when satan comes that he's christ and that we don't believe it because we know better but they will think they're doing us a favor and they're going to be in the name of love, their love, their deception, turning us in to the court of Satan. It's just the way it's written, folks. It's, I'm not making this up. You can check out the scriptures. Ask me. I'll point you to every one of these things I'm telling you. Yep. And they will turn us in because we did not fall down and worship Satan when he bust in into onto the scene. There's going to be an awful lot of suffering. Awful lot of hungry people. The earth's going to start rocking and rolling. There's going to be earthquakes and there's going to be volcanoes and there's going to be pestilence and there's going to be famine and uh, wars and rumors of wars. But 
he won't be returning yet. Those things will all have to occur before he comes. The tribulation, as Christ said, the beginning of sorrows. So prepare yourself, brothers and sisters, because if your eyes are open and your ears are open and you can have eyes to see and ears to hear, you are God's chosen elect. We are. We've been chosen. And we may get a chance to stand up for Christ before Satan in his court. What an honor. Christ said before he was taken, the greatest gift that a man could give is to lay down his life for his friend. Is Christ your friend? He was our friend. He laid down his life for us. He who saves his life loses it. He who loses his life saves it. He who loses his life saves it. But he who endureth till the end will have a place in heaven. You will be given a stone, a white stone, with a new name written on it. And all your good works that you've done will determine how long your white robe is. Your works are the fabric of the robe, the white robe that we will be wearing. No one is not afraid to die. Everyone is afraid to die. No one is afraid to be in heaven. It's a transition. We will be changed in the twinkling of an eye if we are still alive when he comes. If not, we'll be coming back with him. Yeah. Just think how much our Heavenly Father loves us. How much Jesus loved us. He was silent as a lamb. They led him to slaughter. They crucified him. They buried him. And he rose from the dead. He lives. We'll live. We just have to endure. He said, if they persecuted him, they would persecute us. We know what we signed up for. We may not talk about it. We may not um, relish the fact that that's what it is. But that's what it is. But listen, if God doesn't think you can handle that type of persecution, he's going to take you away before then. God never gives you more than you can handle. Rest assured, my friend, we will see you on the other side. If he chooses to take us before he comes, it's for our own good. It's because he loves us so much. He knows who could stand. He's not sending a loser to stand up in the court of Satan. You're going to stand for the glory of God. And don't think about what you're going to say when they take you. Don't give it a second thought. Because Christ said, at that time, he will give you the words to speak. And nothing can be refuted. So 
some people think, oh, Satan doesn't know the Bible. Think about what you're saying when you say that. You know, Satan was created by God to guard the mercy seat. He was one of the cherubims that was created to guard his mercy seat. He made him beautiful. <laughs> when I did the video, and I can't remember what chapter it was, but in Ezekiel, when um, God described when he used Nebuchadnezzar's army to wipe out Tyrus, he described Satan, how he had created him, and he was beautiful. And hardly anybody looked at that video. It's like, my brothers and sisters, read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read it. Ask for understanding and wisdom before you start reading so you can understand what he's saying. <laughs> Satan wanted to sit on the mercy seat. He wasn't satisfied guarding it. He became proud. He wanted to be God. And Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels fought in heaven. Satan drew a third of God's angels away with him. And my nose is running because I'm crying. He drew a third of God's angels away with him. And Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels. And there was a mighty battle in heaven. And Michael and his angels won. One, because they outnumbered them two to one. But also because the truth and goodness wins in the end. It always wins in the end. The truth always comes out. Maybe you won't see it, but somebody after you'd see it. But the truth always comes out. But we're there. We're in the end times. The generation of the fig tree. Yeah. The parable of the fig tree. When the tender shoot comes. When Israel becomes a nation. In 1948, Israel became a nation. This generation, I tell you, will not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. I know, huh? <laughs> wow. Buckle your seatbelt, buttercup. <laughs> Where I think we're going in. There's no stopping what's coming. Everyone will respond in the way that they feel. But don't let your let your spirit lead you. Don't let your flesh lead you. Your flesh is in this world. We are not of this world. We are of heaven in our heavenly father. You two may ban this, but they can never ban the truth. They might not put it up on their little platform, you know, that they think they're so high and mighty, but it's just part of the whole new world order. New world order. Yeah. How they have manipulated everything is incredible. I mean, you guys, we see it right before our eyes. <laughs> Snafu Snap says the optics are high. Yeah, they're pretty high. They're getting higher, <laughs> way higher. <laughs> it's over a lot of people's heads already. They don't even understand. 
They don't see it coming. They don't don't have a clue. And we're hard as we've tried, we can't wake them up. Maybe because God wants them to sleep. <laughs> Everything is by his design. And when we say the Lord's Prayer, and we say your will be done as it is in earth, on earth as it is in heaven, that's exactly it. That's what Christ was saying. His Father's will will be done. He came to do His Father's work. He is of the Father. The Father is in Him. And He is in us. Amazing how God has worked everything out like He did. You know, and the other thing that just kind of blows me away, and I'll say this and then I'll close, but... If you look at from the very beginning that God created everything and then he put Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and Satan came and he deceived them. He deceived them into partaking Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think it's an apple. <laughs> it's not an apple. No, it's never an apple. Satan deceived Eve. And he had sex with her. And then she had sex with Adam. And two children were born. Abel and Cain. Abel was Adam's child. Cain was Satan's child. Satan's children are called Kenites. K-E-N-I-T-E-S. We will stand against them. We have stood against them from the beginning and God has given us power over them. But in the end... He will be given power over the saints. Prepare yourselves. Strengthen your faith as best as you can. Believe me, if God doesn't think you can handle it, he will take you out of the way. He will take you into his arms. He will wipe away your tears. No worries, folks. There is no greater gift than to lay down your life for a friend. Is Christ your friend? Prepare yourselves. I love you guys. Mm -hmm.